a start. First of all, uh, good afternoon to uh, those of you who've joined this webinar this evening. Um, just want to uh, give you all an introduction to the Cisco Meraki platform and uh, hopefully you'll be able to take something from today and uh, follow up afterwards. So we'll take a look at what we're going to cover today in this webinar. We're going to take a look, a little look at the Meraki brand and uh, how it integrates with Cisco. A little bit, a little bit about Circle Cloud as a company. Uh, look at what Meraki gives you for your uh, infrastructure that you might not already have. And then we're going to do a bit of a basic technical demo of the three core products. that will last around 15 to 20 minutes in total. Uh, we'll take a little look at the licensing and costing models and a look at what what comes up next after this webinar. So I'll start by introducing myself. Um, my name's Chris and I've been working for Circle Cloud for just over two years now. I uh, had a background working in your more large enterprise corps uh, on your sort of blue chip and government contracts. Um, I've just recently achieved the Cisco CMNA qualification, which is a Meraki specific qualification. Um, helping give me the resources to present this webinar today. So who are Circle Cloud? Some of the people on this call might be our customers, might already know us, but uh, for those who aren't, Circle Cloud was established in 2013 as a managed service and consultancy company uh, with a foot specialism around everything Microsoft. Um, our core nucleus of our company is Office 365 and Azure. In 2018, Circle Cloud uh, became the first Northeast based IT company to obtain the Microsoft Gold Cloud Platform accreditation for Microsoft. Uh, this award is only given out to those organizations who've met a very stringent criteria uh, set by Microsoft themselves and is also dependent on, as well as several other things, the testimonials provided by our customer base. So, Really, what, what we're trying to get across here is you're not just taking our word when we tell you that this is our specialist area. So, obviously, um, Meraki, we're not talking about uh, 365 or Azure here. Um, Microsoft still being the nucleus of our business, um, we identified a gap in our market, which was the networks that everyone's infrastructure relies on and how we could uh, integrate these with the cloud. So back in 2016, Circle Cloud became official Cisco Meraki partners. Uh, we've since helped a lot of organizations incorporate Meraki into their wider IT strategy. Um, we, since this partnership, we have pushed out a lot of Meraki rollouts spanning over Europe and the USA. And we've delivered these projects uh, also integrated with the 365 and Azure offerings. Given our specialist area and knowledge of the cloud, Circle Cloud has a real unique position here, being able to help organizations leverage the, this, this power that it gives them. Go just take a little uh, step aside just to uh, talk about information security. Um, 2018, and uh, quite a big year for Circle Cloud, we also um, became ISO 27001 certified. Uh, for us, this wasn't just a box ticking ex exercise. It was a complete restructure of how we managed information, our processes, and we chose the lead and standard organization to help us through with this. Um, by choosing a provider like this, uh, you know, you've got the guarantee with us that the information security management system we formed has been certified in accordance with any international san standards set and approved at government level. So we'll dive into the uh, core of this webinar, which is all about Meraki. So we'll start with the question, what is Meraki and how is it different from what you're used to at the moment? So the, the Meraki brand is uh, based around sort of three core main principles. So we've got um, unmatched visibility and control across your entire IT ar architecture. You'll see this more and more as this um, presentation and webinar unfolds. But basically the idea of the Meraki brand is to bring everything into one place and give you visibility over everything on your network. Um, 
the product being inherently scalable. So for those of you wondering what that means is basically that this product can be started in an organization of 10 and easily scaled out to an organization of 10,000 without a lot of administrative overhead. Speaking of which, a reduced administrative overhead, um, including a simple all-inclusive licensing model and tooling to go with it. So, I'm assuming a lot of people on this call have already heard of the brand Cisco. Um, Meraki is an offshoot of Cisco. It actually started as its own brand, just known as Meraki, uh, formulated by a couple of university students. Cisco quickly realized um, the power in what this project was and bought it out. So this basically split Cisco into two uh, work streams, the more traditional on-premise work stream and the Cisco Meraki brand. Meraki is all around um, utilizing the cloud to help manage your network, centralizing everything and making it quite an easy and intuitive deployment for your staff. Um, adding value to your network. There still will be the requirement occasionally to go with the on-premise Cisco kit. So this is where you need some real complicated um, custom configs, uh, your extensive layer three routing support and a very flexible deployment model. However, it should be noted that these devices still work quite well together. So where you might identify from this I still need a Cisco firewall. You might be able to then say, but I could put my, uh, my switches and wireless points in the Meraki space. So I thought it would be uh, good to include this slide just to show that Meraki now has an offering for all of the core Cisco products. So where you've got your traditional ASA firewall, you've got your MX. For your catalyst switches, you've got your MS and so on. It should be worth noted that we will um, send these slides out to any of the attendees after this call, just uh, so you can have a look through them at your own leisure and your own speed. So that brings us on to pretty much what Meraki is all around, which is that centralized um, view of everything, or as it'll be re referred to in a lot of the white papers, single pane of glass management. So what is single pane of glass management? Uh, to put it simply, it's the term used to refer to Meraki's capability to manage your infrastructure and all assets within it. Not just Meraki assets, but all of your computers, uh, phones, tablets, printers, and so on. You can see here at this uh, overview of the dashboard, you can list all of your organization's Meraki assets and allow you to switch between them and manage them in, in the same pane of glass. So what products are we going to look at today? We decided for this webinar, rather than just try and take a look at every single Meraki product, we would take a look at the three core Meraki products that generally everyone will have within their network. So that consists of switches, firewalls and wireless access points. So we'll start off um, by taking a little look through these products and a general overview before we dive into the technical demos. So we'll start off with firewalls. Um, basically, your core principles are it's a next-gen firewall. Um, client VPN is included in the licensing, so there's no complications there around having to buy, for example, any connect licenses for your Cisco kit. Um, automatic site-to-site -site VPN Unfortunately, due to the scale, this isn't something we were able to include in the demo today, but it is one of the um, great things about the Meraki firewalls and this scalability is that when you roll out a Cisco Meraki firewall to another site, to include it in your network, it's literally just an on switch and it will automatically start meshing with your network. Um, your standard um, intrusion detection systems, intrusion prevention, as well as advanced malware protection built in. This all reports back to the same dashboard. With your networking, you've probably heard the term SD1 coined around a lot in the uh, modern networking space. These are SD1 compliant devices. Um, depending on the uh, model, they also have 
inbuilt 4G, 3G SIM card slots. Uh, support your standard sta uh, static dynamic routing as well as link balancing across your um, multiple WAN ports. Application control is an important feature that I will be talking a little bit more in depth about when we get to the technical section, uh, but includes the standard traffic shape and content filtering and geo firewall rules. So what I wanted to include here was a quick look at the range. Um, there's white papers available for each of these firewalls showing the exact tech specs, but I thought it was important to introduce that Meraki is a very scalable product. So we start here at the teleworker devices made for around five users. Uh, it could be put on to, you know, a small office, someone's home working setup, all the way up to large branch concentrators uh, capable of up to 10,000 users. And also Meraki um, integrated with the cloud space. Uh, there is the VMX appliance. So basically what this does is in your AWS or Azure deployment, you can deploy a virtual Meraki that gives you the same benefits um, of the VPN mesh that you would get with the on-premise models. So we'll take a little look at switches. Um, feature highlights here, you've got your voice and video QoS, uh, layer seven app visibility. Now, for those who don't know what layer seven is, I'll explain this a little bit more in our technical demo where it's easier to see. These switches are capable of virtual and physical stacking. So you don't actually need to sit and cable the switches together to create a stack. Multi gigabit performance and all the other features you would expect on these sort of switches, such as dynamic routing, enterprise security, and remote packet capture and cable testing. Again, we'll take a quick look at the range, going everywhere from the small eight part POE small office switch up to the large data center style models with the uh, 40 gigabit throughput and uplink ports. And finally, wireless. Um, wireless is probably the most mature in the Meraki range as it's where it started. Um, the feature highlights here being uh, BYOD and guest access policies, which is one of the demos we'll touch on. Application traffic shaping, enterprise security, uh, WIDS, WIPS, location analytics, wireless health, and DNS layer protection. One thing I will point out, um, is, which is a common comment from a lot of my customers that I deploy these models to, is when it comes to the guest access policies, a lot of customers are saying to me, um, well, I don't actually need to use my firewall to carve out these policies. Um, this is something I'll show you a little bit more in the technical demos, but it should be um, noted that these wireless access points do have a rich feature set that you get more than just a standard access point. And again, a look at the range everywhere from the entry level designed for potentially your small coffee shops, up to your huge high density models and directed coverage models. So, um, Probably enough of a presentation. Uh, we'll dive into some technical demonstrations and a little look at what it can do. So here is the uh, Meraki dashboard that we took a look at earlier, but this is one in, obviously in a live environment. From the start, we can see our network wide. This is basically a look at everything on the network, including uh, we can see some PCs here laptop, uh, phones. We get to see whether they're connected or not by the uh, indicator here, their IP address, etc. So what we're going to do for these demos is take a look at a couple of common scenarios and how they can be simplified using the Meraki platform. So our first scenario is probably a common one for all those IT people out there. Uh, users are reporting that the internet is slow and you're wanting to investigate what's happening with the bandwidth. Using Meraki, this should be very easy to isolate and control the issue. So we'll take a look for the last two hours and we'll take a look at usage. We can see here, uh, given the usage, that we've got one clear outlier um, that is using up a lot more bandwidth than everyone else. And you can see when I hover over it, that it does spike on the graph. 
to show its overall usage. So it was actually using up most of the network. Looks like this issue is cleared down a little bit now, but what we'll do is we'll take a look in to that client to see what went on. So we can see here that there's actually 2.2 gig of usage of miscellaneous web. This caused a big network slowdown. And we don't know obviously when it's gonna be happening again. So what we need to do is isolate and rectify this issue. Notice how quickly we've been able to actually identify the issue which was caused by this asset. So how can we resolve it using the same dashboard? You'll notice down here we have a little policy section. So under this, this is where we can apply what Meraki knows group policies, um, not to be confused with the ones that you'd use in on-premise domain. They are their own uh, independent thing. So what we can do here is we could block the device. Um, we could send a message to the users using that di device. No more streaming. Or if we're not feeling as cruel as that, we can click on group policy. And you'll see there's one I've created earlier here called limit bandwidth. We'll click save on there. And what you'll notice that's done is that's actually told us, okay, this device can only use 10 megabytes of bandwidth on the network. So where do these group policies come from? We'll go to our network wide, which affects all of our devices and go over to group policies. And you can see here, here's the group policy I created earlier. We put a 10 meg bandwidth limit on and also within here we've put a deny on video and music you can see here we can click in and see all of the different video and music uh, suppliers that Meraki sports for this and back to that term earlier layer 7 so for those who are non-technical on the call what layer 7 is is it's the application layer now previously on your on-premise devices um, say you got a request to block Netflix you would generally have to go to that uh, vendor website, find out your IP ranges for Netflix and spend some time creating custom rules. Meraki looked to simplify, uh, simplify this by maintaining that those layer three rules themselves and giving you access to these layer seven rules, which basically you can just click Netflix and it applies the rules that Cisco have wrote in the background. So, you can so we'll save this policy here there is obviously a lot more in here that you can touch on but uh there's a lot a lot more than we can cover in just this webinar so we can see over here that we've applied this limit bandwidth policy to this vm and what we'll do is i'll jump onto this virtual machine now and we'll run a speed test Apologies, I have no ad blockers installed in here, so of course this site takes a little while to load. And you can, you can see that the Meraki application shape takes control and starts, starts limiting the bandwidth down to around 10 meg. It will get closer and closer uh, as the time goes on. And it does the same for the upload. So we can see here that what could have been a lot much longer troubleshooting session, looking around your network, looking at firewall logs, only actually took us a couple of minutes to isolate and resolve using the Meraki dashboard. So what we took, at the, took a look at there was actually dashboard as a whole, and we utilized a couple of the products. But what we'd like to do is take a look at each of the products individually and how it can be managed via the dashboard. So in our next scenario, we're going to say that your company is holding an event and wants a new guest network set up easily accessible by uh, the people attending the event. The event, the SSID needs to roll out to all of the APs on your main estate. So how do we achieve this via Meraki? We jump straight over here on the same pane of glass over to SSIDs. Here we can see our existing SSIDs. Meraki does actually spot up to 15 on the deployment. So what we'll do is we'll enable a new one 
and we'll configure it for event Wi-Fi. And we'll save this change. So now we have this network ready to configure. So we can see here uh, association requirements. I want to leave this open as it's just for the event. But what I want to do is add a layer of security. So we can use a couple of options here. I'll talk about two. Uh, we have the click through that basically uh, puts users or walled garden, meaning they can't break out from to the internet until they've acknowledged your IT security policy or any other policies that you put on there. Or the sponsored guest logon. This is quite a commonly used one now to our customers that do use Meraki. Basically, in this circumstance, the guests actually have to enter their email address and the email address of a sponsor on site. So whoever's invited them to the event, for example, that sponsor will then get a notification on their email with a button just saying approve or deny, and then they can approve them on the network. It should also be noted here that it, we can carve out an uh, amount of time for guests. So this is great for when you want a guest to just be able to access the network while they're on site, but you might not want them to be able to just return at any point. So on this, um, this level of uh, access, you can actually say approve for an hour, approve for 24 hours, customized obviously to whatever you, you would like. So all we do is I'm gonna go with a click through and hit save. And that starts rolling out to my access points. Now, one thing you'll start thinking about is, okay, we've got this guest network, how is that secured from a main network? Again, this is something where Meraki comes into its own. We have something called NAP mode. NAP mode actually takes the clients away from your standard network and puts them in an isolated network. Um, they can't communicate with each other. They can communicate with your LAN if you allow them. Uh, that you might have just one resource you want them to be to see, but we don't normally advise this. So you'll notice now we've got this network, it's starting to roll out. We can take a look in uh, here to the network firewall. Notice that we have firewall settings here for the access points. Meraki APs are actually capable of um, firewall features themselves. So we can see here we've got the event Wi-Fi. So we're going to click deny on access the local LAN. You notice here we can add again layer 7 firewall rules. Uh, same as the ones we saw before, but we can do it per SSID. So you might want to have a much more restrictive SSID where people can't stream, can't do peer-to-peer -peer sharing. So for this one, I'm just going to block peer-to-peer -peer sharing. So this blocks things like BitTorrent, DC++. And also, if you're working with limited bandwidth, we might want to say, actually, guests will put them down to a 2 meg limit and make sure that the network can't use more than 10% of our bandwidth. Again, we've saved that in a click and that will automatically start rolling to all access points in that network. It should be noted networks here, I only have the one uh, standard network, but generally in a larger organization, you would have this divided per, per site or per location. So that once you've, set, once you've clicked and set that away, it will deploy over that location. Again, we see here that using the same dashboard, we've been able to roll out a new guest network in minutes. On premise, this would take a long time, uh, depending on your setup. Um, best case scenario, you had a wireless controller there you could log on to and start updating policies. Worst case, you're logging on to each individual access point, or in even smaller cases, you might be having to sit and configure a router. So we're going to take a look at the, uh, the other two products there. We've managed wireless. Um, we're going to go in and take a look at a common firewall task, which is uh, provisioning remote access to a server from outside the environment. So this is where on premise you would be jumping in and creating NAT rules and ACLs. In Meraki, it is a lot easier. So we hit, uh, head over to the security and SD1 tab, click on configure firewall. And you can see we've got some pre-populated examples, common ones obviously being RDP. 
So again, you can still have a little bit of complexity here. So we might have RDP again, but the put, but your customer may want to come in on their own port. So you might put one, two, three, one, two, four, three. You put a target of the destination server, the local part of that server that you want it to hit, and then pop in the remote IP that you want to be able to access it. This automatically does the NAT and rule and ACL creation in the background for you, meaning something again that would have probably taken you, you know, five to 10 minutes at least for uh, someone with experience on premise can be achieved in a few clicks in dashboard. So final scenario, we've looked at wireless, we've looked at firewalls, we're gonna have a quick look at switches. So a common scenario might be that you've opened up a new branch, you've opened up another office in your building, are you gonna to need to configure those switches? Most common example here is you've set up desks, you've got phones on those desks, you've got PCs on those desks, you might have a pass through in the phone to go through the PC. So we want to be able to configure some switch ports with some VLANs. So you can see here, if we go to switches, within this organization, uh, it's only a small demo tenant. We have two switches. So if I click over here to switch parts, you can see here that we have the switch and what part it is. And we can actually expand this out so that we can see the switch parts for both switches. So what we might do is select the parts we want to edit. These might be the parts that our phones uh, plug in into as well as the PCs. Click on edit. So this allows us to actually edit multiple switch parts at the same time. So for those of you who use things like Cisco Catalyst switches on premise, you might be used to having to go in via PuTTY, via a CLI, individually config each part. Meraki simplifies this for you. So we can easily enable and disable parts through here. So we'll put on access. We'll go with VLAN 1 being the standard and voice VLAN 2. So you notice obviously we've got these two options, VLAN and voice VLAN. Another way Meraki simplifies these switch deployments for you is by automatically categorizing phones and being able to VLAN them on the same part. So you'll be able to plug your phone into your, uh, your Meraki switch, plug your PC into that phone, and both will get their own IP address on separate VLANs automatically detected by the switch. Once we've done this, we just click update, and that's it. This switch is then taught to the Meraki Cloud Controller, pull down this config, and the configuration is live. It should be noted that while doing this, obviously you can see here we've got uplink ports. What if someone accidentally edits one of those and makes it an access port when it should be a trunk? If you ever cause an issue that stops the Meraki switch being able to communicate with the controller, it has a previously known good config function where if it's off for more than half an hour, it will just roll back to the last known good configuration. So once again, we're seeing the ease of administration using dashboard in comparison to, you know, your typical CLI or GUI approach. So hopefully you've enjoyed those demos. We're gonna just pop back over to the presentation now, just to take a little bit of a look at how Meraki licensing works. So Cisco wanted to create this licensing model as simple, all-inclusive. Um, so a Meraki solution has their one-to-one -one ratio of hardware and licenses. There are two main licensing models, which are core termination, which I would say about 95% of people are on, and a preferred per device licensing. Uh, which we'll take a look at on the next slides. For now though, we'll have a quick look at the high level benefits of the Meraki licensing model. So your licensing does represent your total cost of ownership. So you've got, once you've got that license in your dashboard and, and that device added, you've got centralized management and network wide visibility and control. What this means is that you actually, as soon as you integrate a Meraki product into your network, you start getting a little bit more visibility. So for example, we've had um, trials where people have put a switch in between 
their firewall and the rest of the network. And they're starting to be able to report and say, oh, actually, yeah, that asset is doing running a job at 4 a.m. It's using up a lot of bandwidth. That's why we have problems then. Uh, seamless firmware and security updates. So um, once you're licensed, even if you're on an older model of AP, you will always get the latest firmware. And of course, 24 seven enterprise support and a lifetime warranty. There should be probably one of those little asterisks there because it should be noted that the lifetime warranty does not apply to outdoor access points just for obvious environmental reasons. So there's obviously we want to take a look at the difference between core termination and per device licensing. So core termination is about making your life a lot simpler. Um, it's enforced organization wide and grants you one expiry date. That means that all of your devices uh, get added together, the total value of license uh, calculated and one expiry date calculated for this. So this obviously allows you to not have to keep track of different products expiring at different times. You will get multiple warnings, obviously, when you start coming up to that date. There is a 30 day grace period. So if you do manage to miss the multiple emails and the big red alarm bells on your dashboard, you will get a 30 day grace period, at which point Meraki will start contacting you a lot more. Because the next thing that happens, obviously, is your organization is starting to be shut down. So next question, when do license keys begin to burn? So this is order generated. Now, a lot of you might think, OK, well, my order has been generated and now my license is burning. How can I use that? Um, what we say here is you actually get access to dashboard as soon as your order is generated. So generally, obviously, shipping is a day or two. This gives you the chance to actually configure all of your devices before they even arrive on your premise. So you can actually start setting up all of the SSIDs, firewall rules, etc. So that when the kit actually arrives on your premise the next day, you can just plug it into the internet and it is ready to go. This is the model we used when doing a worldwide rollout. We actually managed to do a full uh, rollout to across the world for one customer without attending any of those sites ourselves, just configuring the Meraki's in dashboard, posting them on the site and getting a contact on site to plug them in. It is as easy as that. Um, durations um, for core termination start at one year and go all the way up to 10 years. Some people do prefer to have the sort of more traditional per device licensing model. So this licensing is enforced on a per device basis rather than creating that total pool. It has one or many expiration dates. We still get the 30 day grace period. Uh, but obviously, as those devices expire, they will start shutting down. These license keys are done when activated uh, in the portal rather than on the order generation. So you can see there might be a use case for this occasionally, uh, but generally we would always recommend with the core termination, just keeping everything simple and in one place. It should be noted that all of this licensing can be managed from the exact same dashboard that you do your configuration in. So what happens next? Uh, we've reached up to the end of our webinar now, and uh, where can you go next with this? So here's what you can expect from us. You've made a start on this Meraki journey, having a look at these products, and I'm sure that there's a lot more that you want to know, um, because obviously it's such a broad product range, such a broad range of features. And for that reason, we're going to be doing two things to help you. Uh, so all attendees on this uh, webinar will receive an email from us uh, on the eligibility requirements for re receiving a free Meraki device. So that'll actually just be a free piece of kit for you to use, uh, no strings attached. This will give you the opportunity to explore Meraki's capabilities for yourself um, within your network and start seeing some of that application visibility and control um, that are obviously your main benefits there. And also all attendees will get an email containing a voucher for 30 minutes of free consultancy with myself. 
Uh, you might want to use this to ask more specific questions about the products we covered, the integration into your own network, or you might just want some assistance setting up that free device that you've uh, just received. What you do with your credits is completely up to you. And that brings us to the end. So thank you everyone for watching, uh, watching this afternoon and we look forward to hearing from you soon. <laughs>